Hello everyone, this video is a Visage 100% walkthrough or guide. Throughout this video I'm going to show you how to get all the achievements or trophies for Visage, including all of the collectibles, all of the chapters, all the mirror mask pieces, and all the little sneaky side achievements or trophies that you can get within the game. Thank you all very much for tuning into the video, let's get this going. Okay, so I'm going to skip this cutscene right here. It's kind of a long one. I'm also going to turn down my volume because that was really loud. <laughs> it might have even come through my mic. So the aim of this video is to show you guys how to get all the achievements in the game. Uh, just in one run. It's going to be about three hours long. We need to beat the three main chapters first. And I think I do them in the order Raken, Dolores, Lucy. So let's get into the house and get going. So the phone will ring here, you don't need to answer it. On a fresh playthrough, that's usually the thing you would do. That's uh, actually kind of a little Easter egg you get with some of the collectibles, but we'll get to that later. I do end up answering all the phone calls. When you get to about here, you'll get a message about your sanity. Feel free to skip that. Turn on this light here, come down here and grab this note. I think if you do Raken's chapter first, you don't actually need the basement key to get to the garage key, which is in the laundry room, but we'll get it anyway, just to be safe. This light bulb's going to go out, and you'll get a notification about paranormal events. If you don't know how they work, if you stand in the dark for too long, your sanity meter will start to decrease. Let's pick up the crutch right here. Also, if something happens, like a door slams or something like that, that'll also decrease your sanity. And your sanity meter is displayed in the bottom left of the screen. When you see like a red blood splatter, that means your sanity is decreasing fast. And uh, the more visible the brain is, the more insane you are. And you want to take pills for that. I haven't grabbed any pills though. We're just going to move on with this chapter. If you're looking for something in particular, like a certain achievement or something, I should have them all listed in the description with like timestamps so you can skip to the right point in the video for what it is that you want to do. But I'm just going to do my best to do everything. I've pretty much done most of this already in videos, but uh, I wanted to make one big video and this may be the last video I make for Visage for a while. I might do some speedruns or something. I also might do a video that just explains how to get the good and bad ending. Just so that's separate. But uh, for the lengthy videos, this will probably be the last one. So, once that little cutscene has played out, you're going to get up, come over here to the kitchen, open the doors. You can't go into the kitchen yet, you just need to stand here and look at Raken. He's having a drink. So eventually he'll disappear, and that'll allow you to go into the kitchen. Take your time, Raken. There we go. And when you get to here, you'll get another little scene with him. I think he, like, finds a microphone. What the hell is wrong with this radio? Or something. What? What the fuck is this? He's not happy. Oh, it better not be what I think it is. Bastards. What is this? Who the fuck are you? Angry man. Okay, so I keep going through this door at the end of the hallway. It's a pull door. There we go. Those slimy little fucks. Where the hell did they come here and put all these things? I need to find every last one of them. There you are, little piece of crap. You think you can get me that easily, huh? Nice try, you fucks! What the fuck do you want, huh? I'm right here! Those little fucks. You think you can find one of me? Doesn't have a lot of furniture, does he? But a lot of books. Alright, so follow this corridor around, and then you'll get Don't another you scene. Move, I swear to God! With Raken. Stop right there! What? Ah! Please! Stop! No! Here 
comes Lewis. Right, so once you gain control, the grainy black and white stuff will disappear. We're going to swing right up these stairs. Um, if you want a lighter or pills, you can get pills in here. And I think there's lighters in the parents' bedroom. So there's some pills just in case you need them. And in this room, which is the parents' bedroom. You can find a lighter usually over here on the table. Okay. Sorted. So, now that we've done that, let's head back out of this room. And we're going to go to this door that's on our right. Interact with the door, turn around, and then interact with the picture that appears on the wall. Click on the eye, and that'll open up the door for you. And you're going to go in and sit in the wheelchair. And then you'll have another little cutscene. Concerning the patient that came in tonight, he claims that someone broke into his house and tried to strangle him, and that he used his firearm in an attempt to defend himself. What's weird is that there's nothing in the police report that indicates any break in. There are some minor bruises on his body, but they all seem self inflicted. The police also interrogated the neighbor who called the police. She claims to have seen him tossing books from his bookshelves frantically, seemingly searching for something. And what was he searching for? It's hard to tell. He refuses to answer most of our questions, claiming we already know the answers. He believes we're partly responsible for what happened. It's not really surprising. I took a look at his medical background, and he's had really bad cases of... Scopophobia. Exactly. Hmm. Thanks, Tim. I'll go and see him right away. Of course. He'll be in the transit wing, room 323 until further notice. He seems agitated. So be careful. Thanks, Tim. Duly noted. Right. So you're going to gain control here in a second. And there we go. Now we're just going to head for the door with the big exit sign above it, right here. Through we go. Follow the corridor left here. Left again. I'll try to let the dialogue and stuff play out where I can. Unless I really need to explain something. Head into the open door here that's on your right. Grab the key. Left here. And into room 323. You're going to need to use the key. Seize it and give him the sedative. Now! Get off me! Fuck! You need to interact with the wall in the back of this room. It's in the back right sort of closet room. There's actually a glitch for you to get into this room without grabbing the crowbar. If you just go to the door, you need to go through and interact with the left side of the door frame. It'll unlock the door, but we're going to do it the normal way. Just in case they patch that or something, I wouldn't want that to become irrelevant. So past the door where we got the key a second ago, keep going straight down. And when you reach this point, this door is going to crack open. And in here, in the far toilet stall, you can find the uh, crowbar. So let's head out of here, turn right. We're going back the way we came, just to 323. Keep on going. Back past that room where we got the 323 key. All the way down here, and then swing a left. We're going to go to that wall and use the crowbar on it. It's in the back corner over here. In my opinion, this chapter's probably the easiest one. Dolores is the hardest. I'm not sure if you'd call the mirror mask a chapter. I suppose it is. 
there's definitely enough content there for it to be called a chapter. Took me a while to figure out first time, but Dolores was really difficult to figure out. Given the order that you have to go into the mirrors and stuff to get stuff done. Okay. So when you're through here, grab the key that's on the bin. And then open up this door. Head on through. When you come out of here, you want to go right. We're going pretty much back the way we came, except for one turn. So just keep going back this way. You'll hear raking behind you at this point. Past the door where we got the 323 key. And instead of turning right here to go entirely back the way we came, keep going straight. I think I took the right route. You can take either route. You need to get to this door, basically. Either route is fine. But the uh, the other way, if you don't take that right turn that I did, is a little bit quicker. Entirely up to you, though. <laughs> laughing at us. If I follow this room around, and in the back on this table you can find a flashlight and a key. And we need to walk into this table to push it out of the way of the door. Just keep walking into it, and then open up the door. Pretty sure this is a pool door. Yep. Then we need to go right and follow this room around this way. I'm going to open up this door, open up this door, and follow the corridor this way. And you'll hear Raken being a very angry man. When the invisible wall here disappears and lets you walk through this archway, take a left in that corridor. We're back in the area we were just in. We're going back towards where room 323 was. But we can open this door now. We need to interact with this window. Down we go. Oof. Right. So when you gain control here, you want to go right from where you start. Takes you a second to stand up. This way. You can run nowhere near as fast as you could before now. Yeah, don't go up the stairs, go this way towards the basement. You're basically following the big vines that are all over the place down here. So, follow the hallways this way towards the door with the eyes on it, and then the lights are going to go out. And you need to go into the freezer room that's to your... Oh, it's pretty much behind me right now. I think I was a little bit confused as to where they were. Yeah. It's this way. In here. There's one of the eyes that I need to click on. Be careful in this area. You saw me take a pill there because Raken can show up. And I think the more insane you are, the more likely he is to show up. So be careful. He can show up and chase you here and you might need to run away from him. And down here, where the mannequins are, you can find the other picture with the eye in it. And now that you've done that, we need to head back to that door with the eyes. Or no eyes now. It's kind of jarring that when you're in the hospital scenes, you can run so much faster than you can in the house. But there we go. Interact with the wheelchair. Sit down. Right, and then we're back in the hospital bed. We need to stand up. 
Okay. So back into the hallway that we've already been into. And we can move a bit faster now. And we're gonna to move towards this guy that we can see standing at the end of the corridor. You will be stuck by an invisible wall here, but it'll disappear eventually, allowing you to go this way. And follow the corridor around to your left, and when you get to the end here by the exit sign, you'll wanna crouch. And you can move as fast as you like whilst you're crouch. If you're standing up and you bump into these guys, they'll grab you, but if you crouch, and you'll be fine. Grab the key that's in front of the elevator and then turn around and just head in the opposite direction. These guys will come after you. You need to keep going and use the key on the door down here. Sorted. We're going to follow these stairs all the way down to the bottom floor. And open up this door. And keep going straight forward. There's a missable collectible in this area. All of the chapters have these missable collectors, collectibles in them. But this chapter only has one. And it's in this area. It's Raken's Psychological Evaluation, I think. And you'll need to take a right in a minute in order to get it. Uh, I think it's around here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. In the door opposite the one with all the stuff on it. Just click on that tape recorder and that'll get you your achievement for the psychological evaluation. I'm not sure if you need to listen to it all the way through, but if you haven't got that achievement, just wait for it to pop. And then we're going to follow the corridor around and grab the key in here. When you come out of this door, make sure you turn left. If you turn right, you'll run straight into Raken and he'll grab you. So make sure you turn left when you come out of that door and run over to this door. You're going to do a little face plant in the courtyard area. And then just walk around to the opposite side. We've got all these boulders in the middle of this area. So you've got to kind of stick to the edges. We're going to go through this door. And you want to go right through this door. Raken's going to come after you again to make it snappy and just keep following the corridor around this way and we want to reach uh, the door that is over this way on the left right here use the key get yourself into the stairwell okay So, got a black screen here, we've got to wait. Come down the stairs, grab the flashlight that's next to the toolbox, and come down here, and you want to go left through that doorway. And when you reach the end here, take a right through this door. I think it's a pool door. Yep. And on the left side of this room, you can find a key on this chair. Grab that. Come out of here, and then go right as soon as you come out of the door, and hop up into this hole in the wall. Hop up again, and when you come through here, drop down, you'll want to go left around this curtain, and through this door, we need the key that we just got, the control room key, and follow the corridor around, don't worry about any of these doors, they're not important, we just need to get to this door, open up the door, follow this little corridor around in this room, and there's a button you need to press right here, press that button, and then head back the way you came. Jump scare incoming, by the way. Watch out for that. So, we're heading back now, but we can't go back through that hole in the wall. So we need to go this way, left at the curtain, and then left at the end here. And we can unlock a door that leads us into the corridor we were just in a minute ago. And that's this one. And we're going to go through this door that's on our immediate right when we come through this door. My flashlight's been turned off here. I can't see anything. And we're going to go right through that door. Follow this corridor all the way around to the last door you will find right here. And let's open up this dryer. Grab yourself the magnetic card. And keep heading all the way around. 
Right, so now we're back in this corridor. We need to find the elevator. Which is over here. And when you use the magnetic card on the reader, the door's going to open and the elevator's full of bodies. You need to drag one of them off and then Raken's going to come after you. So as soon as you've done that, go this way. If you just go full circle around this area, Raken will disappear. I kind of did a different strategy here where I waited for a second or two. But you don't actually need to wait. If you just go all the way around the hallway, by the time you get back to the elevator, he'll be gone. But he'll start sort of walking towards you here. And that's pretty much what I do now. I just go this way. But if you just do this and just walk all the way around, by the time you get back to that elevator, he'll be gone. And you can sort of tell when he's around still and close because you can hear his crutches squeaking. But yeah, he should be gone now. And we just need to pull all of these bodies off the elevator so that we can use it. So let's get them all off. Here we go. Come on, you. Couple more. Here we go. Last one. Almost done. And there we go, sorted. So, get on the elevator. And we're going to go this way. And you don't rush out of the door when the elevator opens because there's a bunch of those guys waiting outside it for you that will grab you. So get ready to crouch when the doors open. And here we go. And make your way in between these guys. Keep running here. A couple of different ways you can do this. You want to go right here and then left. When you reach this point, um, you're going to have to make a bit of a split decision. If you go right, there's less enemies for you to do. If you go right here and follow the corridor all the way down and then left, I think there's one enemy that you've got to get around. If you do what I do here and open up these doors, you're going to have a guy behind you and a guy in front of you, and you're going to have to kind of lead one of them through um, or just away from this door. So you're going to have to open up some doors, try and give them the jukes, and run around. A lot of these doors just lead back into the area you're already in. Um, but if you just go right in the corridor there, a right, um, the right that's next to the door that we just went through a minute ago, you'll end up turning a right and then a left, and you'll be at the exit door, and you should only have one of those guys you've got to avoid. Either way, that just that section just kind of requires a little bit of patience. Just because those guys are annoying and they just sort of keep shambling after you. But uh, if you do die, you'll spawn in at the beginning next to the elevator. So you can give it as many tries as you like. Okay. So now we're in this room. We need to trigger the, the TV. And I think the key to triggering it is to mess with the doors, which I haven't done yet. I was standing here trying to get see what I could do to get it to activate. But I think it's tied to the doors. You need to use these two doors that you can see me looking at. I think it just took me a minute to realize that I hadn't interacted with the doors yet. Eventually I'll get there, eventually. I'm just trying to figure out what it is that I had done because after a while the uh, TV turns to an eye. And it just wasn't working here. Like, if you look in the mirror, you can see these eyes painted all over the walls. But I think, yeah, there we go. Interacting with the doors makes it happen. But either way, you just kind of need to keep looking at the TV in the mirror. Make sure you've interacted with those doors. And then the lights will go out in the room. And then uh, you'll get a little cutscene. Okay, so once you reach this black screen, you're going to need to turn around and head for the door that's behind you, and you'll find yourself back in the house. Again, follow these big vines that are on the floor.
and you want to go upstairs right here. It's going to be very dark, so if you need to whip out a lighter if you've got one. I think the game kind of robs you of lighters when you go through these sections. Because I definitely didn't drop it, but I don't have it anymore. So I think it takes them away from you. But once you reach this point by the son's bedroom, uh, Raken's going to come after you, jump over the balcony, and then turn around when you jump down. And one of the eyes you need to click on is right here. There's three eyes that we need to click on for this section. So we're going to go up the stairs again and sort of do a U-turn when you get to the top to go into the parents' bedroom and click on the other eye right there. And the last one we need to get is in the bathroom. You need to pull back the shower curtain in order to get it. So let's go in here, pull back the curtain, and there's the eye. So now if we go right out of the bathroom, we can go into the son's room. And you would think that they might put some RNG into those eyeballs, considering there's a lot of the picture frames around, but only a few of them have the eyeballs you need to click on. But it's the same every time from what I've seen. So no need to worry. Creepy stuff. And so once again, we're in the hospital. It's kind of nice that they expanded on the game by bringing you to a different area. I suppose there's only so much they could have done with the house. Although I feel like it does make this chapter a lot more linear. Right. So follow the corridor around like we have before. I think we want to go left here. Yeah, I took a wrong turn there. We want to go left there. And then you'll see this guy. I think his name is Lewis. I've heard his name is Lewis. Um, pointing us in the right direction. And we're going to follow this corridor down. All the way to the end. And... Click right here to go through. If you click this door too many times, it'll make you go back through it, which is kind of weird. But once you get through that door, you want to go left, and then a right, and then another right into this corridor, and then right, and then left, I think. Oh no, straight on. And then we need to click on the, uh, the panel on number five to unlock room number five, which is this one. He's totally lost it! Leave me you alone! Him with the tranquilizer. We're not supposed to be here! You're all Someone bind him up! Bastard. Get his doctor right away! Let me out of here! Yeah, for some reason if you click on that door, it like breaks the door like this. But you need to go into the room and grab the observation room key and then back into this corridor with the white bricks and take a left. Oh no, sorry, right and then left. Yeah, here to open up the observation room. It's a small little corridor. You can find the flashlight on the table here. You'll have a little cutscene. Right, so back the way we came, the lights will go out, we need to go right to the end of the corridor here, and then right again, following the footprints, and right at the end of this corridor, and into this bathroom area, grab the electric handle out of the toilet. <clears throat> I wouldn't like to see the rectum that these came out of. No thanks. Right. 
So for some reason it takes a second for it to say you've actually picked this up. Like you usually make it back to the door before it tells you about about it right there. Put it away. And we're going through this door now and you need to follow the footprints again. Go into this room and you'll want to walk a little bit further into the room than I did because basically when you walk in here and walk back out you'll get jumped. I don't think I walked far enough into the room to trigger it the first time. He's having a bad day, isn't he? Poor old Dwayne. So we're going to wait till we come to here. You'll need to grab the flashlight, which is now on the floor. Got a bad habit of just going for the hole in the wall without grabbing it. I'm not sure if I did it here. Yeah, it tells you you need the flashlight. So turn around and grab that. It's on the floor. It's a bit awkward to pick up sometimes, but there we go. And the best way to get through this passageway, because it's a bunch of like drops and turns and stuff, is just to look at the floor. So I think it, I think most of the turns, or in fact, it looks like all of the turns except for the last one are left turns. But if you just follow the pipes by looking down, it makes getting through there way easier. And then eventually you'll come into this area. It's full of these faceless guys behind a chain link fence and then interact with the TV at the end. And we're almost done with Raken's chapter. It's really not a long one or a difficult one to get through. Take a left and duck through the fence. And you need to head to the back right corner of this room. And you can find the knife on the bed here usually. If it's not there, it should be on the table that's opposite you. I haven't seen it spawn anywhere else. Those are the only two places I've seen it spawn. If it's not there, you're just going to have to look around the room to find it. Although, if you die in this area, if Raken catches you, you're just going to spawn back in the room. <laughs> So you can try that section as many times as you like. But once you've got the knife, you need to come over here and stab the eye with it. Let me know if you do find the knife in other places. Those are the only two places that I've seen the knife spawn. In that bed I went to first time and on that table where we just grabbed it from. I didn't actually know it spawned anywhere else because I've done this chapter a few times and it had always spawned in the back corner on that bed. Um... So I'm guessing there's an element of RNG there, but it's not too bad. Right, so now we can travel down the optical nerve of the eye and we'll go through this door. And once you get through here, you'll need to use the electric handle that we grabbed out of the toilet on the circuit breaker right here. Now turn the power back on. We can unlock this door now. We'll come out of this door. It's a pull door. So be ready. We're going to go through this door that's on our right, I think. Let me see. Yeah. And then we're going to head back this way. Ignore the footprints, but just keep... Well, you go in the opposite direction of the footprints. And then when you reach to this reach this point, you want to turn right and open up the elevator. And then interact with it. Be careful about how fast you interact with the button in on the inside of the elevator. Because it can break the game. And it'll tell you you can't do it if you do it too quick. So you might want to wait a second once you're inside. So, once the elevator doors open, we're going to follow this corridor and take a right here. And it, as you keep following this corridor, you'll see a cracked open door and we're going to go through that door. So, Cutscene in here. Great, right. I'm here with good news. Based on your behavior and recovery in the past few months, you'll be ready to leave and go home. Sounds good, right? There are just a few technicalities that need to be taken care of, but this will just take a couple days. With everything that happened, I'm sure you'll be very happy to leave this place. Well, I'll, I'll get 
back to you soon. <laughs> okay, so there's an invisible wall here that won't let you walk towards this cabinet, but that's where we need to go eventually. It will disappear. It takes a little while. Once you can walk into the side of this thing and push it out of the way of the hole in the wall. And you really have to push this thing as far as you can. You would think once you get it to about here you can jump through the hole, but you really have to push it as far as you can before the game will let you go through the hole. There we go. And this is the end of the chapter. Almost one chapter down. We've got one little cutscene to watch now and that's about it. Sucks that the game makes you leave the flashlight behind. That would come in really handy in the main house. But down we go. I'm going to open up this door. I think it's a pool door. Yep. And you're going to have this cutscene with Raken. He's an angry, angry man, I'm telling you. So once th he stops screaming and the door appears, which will happen in a second, walk as close to the mirror as you can. I was already there, so the door behind us just spawned but you need to get really close to that mirror for it to spawn so getting through that chapter will get us chapter raken complete raken's chapter should get you that achievement and the psychological evaluation which is fine raken's psychological evaluation tape take note of this tape on the floor um we're not going to take it just yet i'll leave that so i can get all of those together i don't have a lighter here so i'm just going to turn on some lights we're in the basement, and as we haven't been down here yet, um, everything is in darkness, so I want to turn everything on if I can. So when you're in the basement, it's a good idea to check this dresser right here. There's a light for us. you will see me come to this spot a bunch of times during this run, and that's because there's an achievement tied to getting the alien. Uh, or find in Bernard the alien and he spawns there and also in the living room I found him once before as well so keep your eyes peeled for that it was the last one I needed that'll get you the achievement gotcha you little you warped Bernard the alien back to planet Kaif but let's go ahead and do Dolores's chapter I need to pick up the key that's in the main hallway and that's the mirror key and then we can open up this door and then we want to interact with the mirror that's in here. Let's go ahead and get rid of this key by opening the other door that's in this area. And then we're going to go back to the living room. And interact with the mirror that's in here. And then we can leave the living room and we need to go upstairs in a second. But first let's go this way and into the laundry room to grab the garage key we're going to need that and it's in the dryer so come into the kitchen and grab yourself the laundry key like i said to you guys before um doing the chapters in this order means that those two doors that you just saw me go through are actually unlocked which is kind of weird i'm not sure if i grab the basement key actually i might grab that on my way back i'm not sure but that's in the living room. I'm sure I grab it at some point. I think I might have to. Um, let me see if I grab it here or not. Yeah, it's just in here on the dresser right there. Make sure you've got those two keys because you might come across some doors that you need to open. So now we're going to come up the stairs and then take a left and interact with the mirror that's right here. And then we need to go to the progress room. 
but first let's grab some extra pills just in case you've ran out pills should keep spawning in here you can see a bunch over here on the table so grab those if you really need them although i think i've only used one pill so far on raken's chapter and i don't even think i really needed to use that but once you've done that george will be waiting for you at the bottom of the stairs after you've interacted with that last mirror, you'll need to go into the parents' bedroom anyway in order for George to spawn. Like, if you just try and go down the stairs after getting the mirror, he won't be there, so... Even if you don't need pills, go into the parents' room and just wait around for a few seconds, and... If George doesn't spawn when you go back to the top of the stairs, then just keep going into the parents' room and back out until you see him at the bottom of the stairs. Okay, so... Now we're in the progress room, let's grab the far-reaching hook that's stabbed into the painting up here. Sorted. And put that away. That phone's still ringing. It's kind of annoying to listen to, but never mind. Like I said earlier, that's kind of attached to an Easter egg that we're gonna do in a little while. So, we're going back to the stairs now, so we can go into the attic. So up the stairs, when you get up here, swing a left and use the hook on the stairs so you can pull down. Up we go. And follow the path around here up this little set of stairs, interact with the rocking chair. And then the floor is going to open up here. Down we go. Grab the slipper that's at your feet as you drop down. And then you want to use the slipper with the other one on the bed. Look at the mirror. Turn around. Turn back around. And then you can leave this room after grabbing the cassette that's on the table right here. This is one of the collectibles that's missable in Dolores' chapter. There's four of these. And if you don't get them during this chapter, you won't be able to get them again. So make sure you grab them all if you want them. Follow the corridor around here until you hear the clock. And then you want to stand about here and wait for things to happen. You might want to take a pill at this point because you'll be going slowly insane. I don't think I did this time, but you can see that I'm going more insane here. and That's not a good thing. So once you spawn back in, you'll be at the top of the stairs, and then we're going to follow the trail of blood. And this will lead us to the progress room. We did pick up a couple of bottles of pills, so you should have plenty to help see you through the entire game. So, let's go through this hole in the ground. Down we go. I'm not sure if this thing we're climbing down and following is supposed to be some sort of umbilical cord. There's a lot, a bit of symbolism around like kids and babies in this chapter, so maybe it is. And I think one of the mirrors is supposed to represent Dolores' womb, which is a bit weird, but I guess it's possible. So we're going to duck under that gate right there and then you'll appear in this room with a bunch of mirrors. And once you reach them, you'll want to Swing around to your left and just keep looking in the mirrors until you see Dolores with a back turn to you. Look into that mirror and you'll see her walk away from you and then keep moving to your left and you'll spot Dolores on the right here. I think I actually walked past the mirror she's in, but if you don't see her, just keep going around. Eventually you'll see her. Um, this is the third mirror. And the second one didn't show up for me, but... Yeah, you'll see her walk away from you again, and then you'll find the hanging one. And then once you see this one, where she's sort of standing there looking at you, back up from the mirror, turn around, and then turn back around, and you'll see she's gone. Then she'll give you that jump scare, and then the mirror will fall over, allowing you to jump down. Right here. Okay. So, let's turn around and leave this room. We've now 
gold or the mirrors in the house that we can break and go into. And the big confusing thing about this chapter is that you've got to do them in a pretty specific order. So we need to go to the garage to get the hammer so we can actually smash these mirrors. So that's down here. We need to use the garage key. There we go. Open up the door. And we're going to get into the car. You don't have to turn off the car alarm, but if you click on the left side of the dashboard, you can turn off the car alarm because it gets kind of annoying to listen to for so long. And then interact with the hammer that's on your right. Sledgehammer for the win. Right, there we go. Sorted. So from picking up that one cassette in Dolores' room, you should get the achievement, which is George's Memento. Find one of George's audio cassettes. There's four of them to get, though. I'll show you where the other three are. So we need to close the car door, and it can be a bit awkward to do that in order to grab the hammer heel. Let's put the lighter away, because we need both hands. And we're going to go into the living room and smash open the mirror that's in there. We're not going to go into it yet, but we just want to smash it open. Otherwise, we might find ourselves in a situation later where we've got to get make more trips to get the hammer than we actually need to. So once you've done that, just walk away from it and go back the way you came, but take a left here instead of going to the garage. And then we're going to smash this mirror. We're going to come back to this mirror in a second. One thing it's kind of helpful to do is to smash the mirrors as you walk past them, um, just because Dolores can show up at any moment to attack you. And if you go into the mirror, she can't come into the mirror. So it kind of gives you a safe area if you get into some trouble and she starts chasing you. So right here, we've got the sphere that the baby is holding. And like I said, this seems to represent Dolores' womb or something. Take the sphere from the baby when you go through the mirror that's in the progress room. And then we're going to go back to the garage. There's actually a quicker way back to the garage if you go through the door that's on your left as you come out of the progress room. But this way is fine too. Either way is fine. You get there one way or the other. One of the ways just saves a few more seconds. Let's flick on the light here and open up the vice. And we're going to use the sphere with the vice. And that will give you the solution to the puzzle. So this puzzle's changed a little bit. I don't know why they changed it. But there used to be four parts to this puzzle. If for some reason you're playing the old version, I'm not sure if you would be, but if you are playing the old version for whatever reason, you might find that there's another piece to this puzzle that I'm not doing right now. I'll explain it to you though. You have these three plates as you come into this mirror. And we're going to turn the first one three times and turn the last one once. And then we're going to open up this window and this window, leave the middle one closed. So in the older version of the game, there were candles on the wall in that sort of dark corridor that I just walked down. And you need to basically put a candle on the middle one and light it. But they're not there anymore. Like in the full version of the game, they removed that. I'm not sure why. Um, but yeah, you need to put a candle in the middle one and light it and the candle should already be on the left candlestick so you'll have a candle there ready to do what you need to do so i think the times here are from left to right six o'clock three thirty and twelve thirty turn the times to that and then uh, this room activates don't leave the room just keep walking around in circles around the room and uh eventually you'll have another room spawn 
you'll see that as you walk around like this that the mirror disappears which is a little bit creepy but it's going to be fine totally fine eventually you'll see a room on your left appear and I think it should be around this corner now nope maybe not where is it maybe this time yeah, there we go. So you need both hands to grab the baby monitor. So if you've got a lighter out, put it away. Make sure you drop the hammer, but drop it next to the um, the crib here so that you can easily grab it again once you're done picking up the baby monitor. If you drop it too early, you're going to get too far away from it and the game's going to send it to the storage room and you don't want to do that. So it's a good idea just kind of to drop it at your feet, grab the baby monitor, put the baby monitor away, and then pick up the hammer. Or you can you can carry the hammer in one hand, but you can't swing it in one hand. You need both hands on the hammer in order to swing it. So now that we've done that, we need to go upstairs. So let's follow this hallway and take a right and then take another right up the stairs and then a left at the top of the stairs and then smash the mirror right here. And we're going to go down this hallway. And crouch down and smash the floor with the hammer. You need to do this five times, and if you're not quick about it, Dolores is chasing you, so you need to be quick about smashing the floor. Okay. So once you gain control here, we're going to head down the hallway and into this room. On the left side you can find a set of stairs that you can climb, so let's go up those stairs. And there's a crank right here in the middle. Pick up that crank and then interact with this little dial. This one as well. And then we need to go to the opposite side of the room this way. And interact with this one. There we go. So now we're going back the way we came. Down the stairs. And down the hole right here. And we need to crouch under a couple of these beams. Keep moving, keep moving. All the way through this underground passage. And the only reason we just did that area is to get the crank, because we need that to get another item. We need to do some more stuff in the mirrors. So back through here, let's open up this door, swing a left through this door, and then we should be in the basement. Right, smash open this mirror that you're next to. Don't go into it though, just take a right. You might want to check that dresser I mentioned for the alien as you walk past. And let's open up the uh, closet doors here. I'm not sure if Dolores came after me here. Open up this mirror. No, I think we're good. Or did she? No, we're good. Alright, through we go. There's an easter egg in this mirror. Um, that's kind of difficult to do. You need to drop the hammer in order to do it. So once you get through this hole in the wall, drop the hammer and open up the door. Not either way is fine, but you do need to drop it. I'm not sure where I dropped it, but because we're going down into this hole, uh, you need a lighter. But you need to grab one of the crosses that is uh, just through the door that gets knocked over by the the door when you open it and you need to drag the cross all the way through this mess with you and it can be a bit awkward it can get stuck and stuff um, just know that if you're walking along and then the cross sort of seems like it's got stuck in a wall if you just keep walking eventually it will pop back towards you 
and you'll have it back. So once you get through that tunnel with the cross, um, you're going to have to drop it here so that you can use the crank on the door. Don't worry if you mess it up. Like, if you drop into the hole without grabbing the cross, or if you feel like you lose the cross, if you follow this room all the way back around, uh, when you go through that door again, the crosses will be there again for you to do the Easter egg. So you can try it as many times as you like. But this is the achievement for finding, oh no, it's called gearing up, find the shotgun. So grab the cross again and approach the hole in the floor, which is right here. And before you go over, turn around and head back to the cross and grab the knife out of it. And then you can walk across the hole using that cross. And when you come and heal, you're going to find the shotgun. troll okay so now that that's done we can drop down the hole right there back the way we came through the hole in the wall so like i said that'll get you the achievement gearing up find the shotgun okay so back into the house then we've got that knife which is what we needed and now we need to go to the storage room right here in order to grab the hammer back because we still need it but we have to drop it in order to do that easter egg and the great thing about dropping it there is the storage room is right next to the mirror so we don't really spend a lot of time without that bad boy so now that we're down here let's come over here and smash this mirror we need to put our lights or a way to do that smash that mirror and then don't go into that one, but just get it open and then come this way down the stairs and smash this mirror. And we're going to go into this mirror and have a little conversation with Dolores. So long, George. You know when tea time is. And yet you always find a way to Audio cassette right there. Were you in your study room again, scribbling nonsense and talking to your recorder? I'm beginning to think you love your work more than me. I know you tire of me. Oh, yes. I know you'd have me gone in a heartbeat if you could. It's just... I'm... I'm sorry. I'm just tired. Would you be a doll and fetch me some of my special tea? You know where it is. I'll wait here, George. Right. So, now we're going to leave this mirror. Make sure you've grabbed the key off the table and the cassette that's to the left of the entrance of the mirror when you walk into that mirror. And now we need to go back to the main house. So open up this door to the toilet. And the toilet's gone, but there's a big hole in the floor. And you can jump into that hole. So this is, I think, the only way to get back to the main house. And the only way to get to the basement is by using the winding corridor. Sometimes the mirrors will just lead you to the basement as well when you solve the mirror. But the only way for you to do it on your own is through that one mirror that has the winding corridor. But we only use it once in this run. I know that that mirror actually makes some people motion sick. So that's something to look out for. It's a good idea to minimize using that as much as possible. So now we're going to head upstairs. And we need to go into the office room. It's a good idea to grab the electric room key while you're in here. It's in the dresser um, that's behind me right now in the top left drawer. I don't think I grabbed it here. I think I grabbed it later. But it's a good idea to grab it now. Um, like I said, it's in the top left drawer. And once you get into this mirror, grab the infusion bag that's on George's lap. And then use the knife with him. And you'll end up stabbing him in the chest. Make sure you don't miss the infusion bag. It's easy to think you've only got to do one thing here and just stab him with the knife. But he's got that infusion bag on his lap. Make sure you grab it. 
he's going to drop a key for you. Thank you. And then we'll head over to the left side of this room and interact with the door over here. And then we need to open this door using the key. And in this room is a little box and you can find one of the toys you need and another one of the cassettes. So that's three cassettes now. Only one more to get. When you come back out of this room, George is going to be standing there looking at you. Turn around and come back into this room and stand as far back in the room as you can for a few seconds until the creepy music stops. And then when you come back out, George will be gone. So... Now we're going to leave this mirror. We need to go and get Dolores' tea next. And that is through this door. And we need to go into the attic again. So open up the attic with the far-reaching hook. There's also another achievement up here for getting the smiley sticker. But I think I left that until uh, we'd done all the main chapters. And I was just going around doing the side stuff before I did the mirror mask. So come back to where the rocking chair was, and to the left of the doorway you walk through is another little box, and you can find Dolores' tea in there. God knows why they lock away a tea. Must be hallucinogenic tea. When you drop back into Dolores' bedroom, use the baby monitor in here, and you'll hear Dolores talking to you, um, saying a bunch of numbers. You'll need to put the baby monitor in your hand, and then... Use the button that represents that hand to play the baby monitor. So, 50373, if you look up at the clocks, you can see the times. And essentially you're going down the corridors that say 5, then 12, then 3, then 7, then 3. The easiest way to remember it is left, right, Left, right, forward, left, forward. Left, right, forward, left, forward. I think that's it. Left, right, forward, left, forward. But basically the code she's talking represent, represents the times on the clocks. Also, there's a tape in that room. The last tape you want to get is in that room. Although I didn't grab it there. I went back and grabbed it in a minute. You can go back into the mirror to grab it. But on the table with the baby Don't monitor... Don't touch that. All right, relax, Dolores. On the table with the baby monitor is the last audio cassette tape, but I'll grab that in a minute. I actually forgot to grab it there, but uh, you can grab it in a moment as well. You can go back into the mirror. Once you've gone through those hallways successfully, you'll end up going into that room with the phonograph, and when you interact with the handle, Dolores will get mad and tell you not to touch that, and then you'll end up here. And uh, you just want to keep following these corridors. Sorry if there's a lot of information coming at you, but I'll try my best to explain it. Again, the route you want to take through that hallway with the clocks is left, right, forward, left, forward. Easiest way to remember it. Okay. All the way through these doorways, pretty linear area. Back into this room. And then interact with phonograph to get the handle. You kind of have to fight the camera here because it's trying to make you look at this crib. But I'm just uh, trying to open the door and leave, which is pretty much what you need to do. And we're going to head out. Keep an eye on the dresser here every time you walk past it. Have a look for that alien. He's RNG so he can show up when he feels like. But now we're going to go this way and we're going to go and talk to Dolores. We need to use her tea on the teacup. And Dolores is going to get big mad. Ah! Oof. <sighs> I knew it. I'll show you, you damned scoundrel, what bread you're worth.
<laughs> okay. So once she's all good and mad, we need to interact with the oven door to get out of here. And here we go. Grab the crowbar and the toy from the table. And then head back this way. And we need to go through the mirror that we opened up a little bit earlier. I'm actually going the wrong way here, I think. So again, a little bit confused here. Yeah, we need to go through this mirror now. And this is the only time you need to use the crowbar. You literally get one use out of the entire thing. Grab the compass. Right. Down we go. You can drop the crowbar now. You don't need it anymore. We need to go back and grab the hammer though. So let's grab our hammer. And now we need to head back sort of the way we just were yeah this way and there's one more mirror we need to crack open so let's head this way turn on the light you might get a jump scare here so be ready sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't and we're gonna go this way and hop up the stairs smash open the mirror And you can run a little bit faster in this area. You can drop the hammer now. You don't need it anymore. Pull out the compass. And then go this way. And keep following the path. Kind of a long way to go, I know. But you can run faster in this area, which is nice. And we need to go into the graveyard. If you try and come this way without the compass through that mirror... The game will just keep spawning you back at the top of the street and it won't actually let you come this far. So, let's keep going. Keep following this path around this to the left of the angel statue. And all the way around, eventually you'll come to a section where you can sort of branch off and you can find a grave. Bit of a long walk, but we'll get there. Stuck on a bush. Okay, I think it's here somewhere. Yeah, just past this bench. Right here. You can find another one of the toys. Crack open that bad boy and get yourself the spaceship toy. And then we need to head right here, follow the path around, and you'll end up by the angel statue again. And you want to go right this time to find your way out of this area. Eventually you'll come to like a tomb, crypt sort of area. I 
open up that door. Then you can just follow the path back to the house. There's not a lot left. To do, um... Yeah, not a lot left to do with... Dolores. We've done most of it. So, now that we're back in this area, we've done everything that we needed to. We need to go back to the bathroom and jump down the hole so we can get back to the main house. Okay. So, now we need to go back to the progress room. Through the mirror that's in here and grab the baby out of the crib. Need to take the baby to Dolores. She's been waiting for us. That rhymed. I don't, honestly didn't mean it to. Right. Okay, Dolores. Take your kid. Pay your damn child support. I'm calling social services, mate. This baby needs a damn wash, woman. We'll get the moon toy. So we've only got one more of these toys to get. And we are nearly done with Dolores. So grab yourself that moon toy. Head out of this mirror now. And then we need to go to the living room. Which is the mirror we smashed open at the beginning of this chapter. And I think after this mirror is when I grabbed that other cassette tape I was telling you about that I forgot to grab earlier. Like I said, when you're doing the clocks with that hallway and the baby monitor and all that stuff, you can grab it then. It's just on the table, but I do go and grab it. Because you can store the tapes away, and when I went to store the tapes away, I realized I'd forgot to grab one of them. So we need to grab this painting that's on the right side in the middle. Um, you'll probably need to drop it in order to open this door. So open up the door, turn around, grab your painting, and then put the painting in the middle, and then we need this one over here. I think I put these in the wrong order, possibly, like these last two. Oh no, we got it right. So that's the solution. And the paintings are always in the same place as well, so feel free to copy me. Use the infusion bag with the contraption on the left side. I don't know what you call that. Don't hate me. I, I don't know hospital stuff. But then you can get the sun toy and we can leave. So now we have... Is it five? I think there's five toys. It's four or five. I'm pretty sure it's five. And we need to go and use those on the mobile, on um, on the mobile, on uh, in the parents' room. God, I can't English today. All the way around, I'm going the wrong way. Remembering the routes can get a little bit confusion. 
and uh, use the uh, the toys on the mobile. Do it. There we go. All right, and interact with the mobile, and you'll get a key. Oh, I forgot to put the sun one on there. I missed one. And yeah, there's five. Star, sun, moon, spaceship, and cloud. And there's your key. To grab that key... Thank you very much. And then we need to come over here and use that key with the uh, box on the floor right here, the music box, and we'll get the vinyl disc. And you can store away the tapes that you found right there, and I realized that I was missing one. Dolores was giving us a spook in the bathroom, which is not very nice. Can't really see anything here. Let's put the light on. God damn it, it's dark. Let's go back into this mirror. I'll show you where this tape is. And this is the final tape we need to get, which will get us the George's Memento Master achievement. Find all George's audio cassettes. There we go. That's all of them. Very good. All of those collectibles are missable, so make sure that you get them. trying to keep an eye on the achievements we're getting so I can let you know when we get them and stuff. There we go, the final tape. And now we need to go back to the basement. And the only way for us to get there is to use that winding corridor. So let's go down the stairs and I'm going to check this dresser here for the alien. I don't think he showed up for me. Um, I kept searching and kept searching. I've heard that if he doesn't show up, you can restart the game, and uh, that resets the RNG for whether he's there or not. Um, I do show the lo I do show him in this video. I've got another video where he, um, where I found him, so I will show you what he looks like and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, he's RNG, so and he didn't show up throughout this playthrough. I've heard though, if you just keep resetting your game, he will show up. And you can find him during chapters, in between chapters, and whenever. So we're going through this mirror, by the way, that's next to the garage door. And uh, this will take us to the basement. And pretty much now we've just got to wrap up this chapter. We are nearly done. Lucy's chapter is much shorter than Raken's and Dolores's. So now we want to go to where the TV is in this area. Again, you can check for the little alien here if you want to. Every time you come back past that dresser. If you want to check the location of him, I'll timestamp it in the description for you so you can check it out. Use the crank and the vinyl disc on the phonograph here. Make sure you use the crank first. If you use the vinyl disc, sometimes it'll glitch and it won't let you use the crank. So just use the crank first. And then we'll go into this mirror, which is the final mirror. You'll hear the music start playing. And we need to make our way through this area full of stairs the key to getting this done is to follow the music if the music goes all warped and weird like it does for me right now it means you're technically going the wrong way however this is the fastest way to get there you can sort of climb up certain stairs and then drop off onto other stairs and it kind of makes it a lot easier and faster so feel free to follow my route although if you want to make it Maybe a little bit simpler, just follow the music. Like when you hear the music playing normally, it basically means you're going the right way. If you hear it get warped and distorted like it is for me, you go in the wrong way. But this way works too. This is the door we're looking for. I don't think the game intends for you to drop down off ledges onto other ledges like I just was. This is the only door you can actually go through. All of the other doors are just blank. Alright, so follow this corridor along. Keep on going. Come on. 
can't use your lighter here, which kind of sucks. Through we go. Use this peephole. And then this peephole. Kind of makes me wonder what happened to the baby. I hope it got found, is all I'm going to say. So, let's go through this door then, and that's it for Dolores' chapter. Just grab the progress item, which is on the floor. You can also find one of the videotapes here. I'm going to leave that tape there, and we'll just gather them all up at the same time. I'm also going to put that tape away uh, right here on the desk. You can find... Uh, this tape play up right here on the desk now it's kind of cool that they did that because this room does change and there's the tape you get for beating Dolores's chapter these tapes or three of these tapes there are seven tapes to get in total but three of them only spawn after you beat the chapters let's go ahead and do Lucy's chapter then we need to come over here to this door and grab the panda drawing off the door approach the desk with the drawings on it and then the closet's going to open over here and walk into the closet and you need to knock on the closet wall the back wall of the closet and you'll hear knocking back you need to do this three times and the final knock will be a really loud boomy one and that lets you know that you've activated the next part of the chapter so let's head out and down the stairs and we need to go into the living room right here and the tv will shut off when you approach it and then when you walk away it'll turn back on and you can see that lucy is standing in the doorway of the freezer room right there and that's where we need to go so let's go we're going to come out of the living room and go left and then right here down the stairs use the lighter if you need to and once you get down here, you'll hear Lucy moaning. You can check that dresser for the alien again. Turn the light on in there. And you'll hear the camera start flashing away. Grab yourself the camera. And take some pictures of Lucy to start her off. When you take pictures, she should start walking towards you. And uh, if you stand about where I am right now, that'll prevent you from going further insane. Kind of takes a minute. I wanted to grab a light bulb here as well. Because there's an achievement for fixing a light. So I ended up grabbing a light bulb. From the freezer room. You can also find them in the garage. But yeah, Lucy walks towards you here. Which is kind of creepy. And when the light starts uh, stops flickering. That lets you know that she's gone. And the door here will open back up. Which is where we need to go. So let's go this way. I'm just turning on lights right now. Back the way we came. All the way up here. And up the stairs. And we need to go into this room on the left, which is the office. You've got another opportunity here to grab the... Uh, to grab the ele electric, electric room key, if you want it. It's in the top left of that dresser that I was looking at right there. 
top left drawer. So once you've looked at that back wall with a drawing on it, you might need to use your lighter to see it. When you come back down here into the main hall, this door will have changed. And when you go through it, you'll end up outside. And you need to follow the sign that says guilt. So in this chapter, the collectibles are Maitri Oshka dolls, Maitri Oshka dolls. You can find four of them in the house at any time, but three of them you can only get during the chapter. So if you've already done this chapter and you haven't got the three that are in the chapter itself that you can't come back to, you're probably going to have to replay this chapter in order to get them. Luckily for you, this chapter is a really short one. It's like 25 minutes or something like that. It's very short. So don't worry too much if you have missed them. You can always do the rest and then just load up a new save and just do this chapter just to get the dolls. And I will show you where all of the dolls are. If you're just looking for the dolls, I'll timestamp them in the description for you so you can skip along and just find them at the right parts. One of them is in this section and this is one of the sections you can't come back to. So make sure you get the doll that's in the treehouse that I'm about to show you. So getting this one will get you the achievement Matryoshka doll. Find a Matryoshka doll. I hope I'm saying it, it might be Matryoshka. I, I, Matryoshka? I don't know. But either way, the doll is underneath the table in the back right corner. You can kind of see it there, but you need to interact with the piece of paper that says, I want to be your friend, Lucy, and then use the key on the box here on the floor there's the doll right there, you can see it. Sneaky one. And then you need to open that box and interact with the piece of paper that's inside. And then you'll get locked in the treehouse. You're kind of stuck in here for a minute anyway, so you've got plenty of time to grab that doll. It's bad, you see. It has to go away. You just kind of chill in here. I want to help you. It's not what it seems, Lucy. Your parents wouldn't understand, Lucy. Only you can understand. Get rid of it, Lucy. Do it, Lucy. Do it. Get rid of it, Lucy. Do it, Lucy. Get rid of it, Lucy. Do it. Get rid of it, Lucy. 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 Eventually, you'll fall through the floor here. And you'll end up in the basement. And now, first time you play this chapter, it's actually really creepy at this point because all the lights get turned out in the house. In fact, the light switches get removed from the house, so you pretty much plunged into darkness, which really sucks. So, once you gain control, go ahead and head back the way we've been a couple of times. You might want to look for your little alien on that dresser again. And we're going to go up here. You can use the camera to light your way if you like. We need to go back through this door and up the stairs. And we're going to go towards Lucy's room, which is where we found the pound, uh, panda picture. And you can see Lucy sitting on the floor here doing something. You get a little jump scare. And then we need to go into the parents room because Lucy's room is now locked and we need to go through the closet that links to Lucy's room. So let's open up this door, head through and use the door or the picture of the door three times. There we go. In we go. And in this next room, you've got to find a key. And the key is RNG. It can be in different places. It's in, set, it's in one of the sets of drawers 
in this room and there's a bunch of them so you need to keep looking through all of the drawers I'll try to show as many of them as I can there it is for me but it can show up in a number of different drawers if you hear um, an audio cue like a jump scare audio cue you've gone too far and more than likely loose is there there it is there's another set of drawers right here that you can look through um, that it can be in I just wanted to show these just in case you guys are stuck but in the back of this room you can see Lucy walking around and if you wait for her to come back over this way she sort of walks left and right if you wait for her to walk to the right she kind of gives you clear passage to get to the door and you've got to use the key you just found um, to get through that door so you just want to make sure she's out of the way and you've got enough time to get to the door you can lead her back further into the room if you want to make it safer for yourself but she's honestly not that hard to get around when you come into this corridor she's going to be chasing you so just keep moving forward and go through the door at the end interact with the door in front of you and then the one you just came through and both should disappear and then circle around the bird cage until the bird itself disappears or the little wooden bird and then Lucy will appear in the corner doing some weird stuff kinda strange Right, so when she's gone, I don't know why here, but I ended up circling around the birdcage again. I think I might have been trying to kill some time for a second while I was doing something, but we need to go through the door. I'm not sure why I did that. One of the Matryoshka dolls is also in this room. You can't, this one is missable. Make sure you don't miss that. It's just on the floor next to the pile of junk. Um, grab that. Make sure you don't miss it. And when you go through the door, we're going to approach this wardrobe and interact with it. Jump scare. He doesn't like the camera flash. Okay, so we're back in the main house, top floor. And once you regain control, come in here and grab the mannequin jaw from the sink. And then we're going to head downstairs and we need to go back to the basement to use the mannequin jaw. So all the way down. The lights are all out. I know it's very creepy. And here we go. This way. Creepy noises. <laughs> Use the mannequin drawer on the mannequin right here and then open up the wardrobe that opens a crack next to it. Open it up and take pictures. Another jump scare. And then we get warped to another section of the house. Okay, so go through the door and head left. If you use the camera to see where you're going, you'll see Lucy at the top of the stairs. Don't worry about her. Take a right when you get to the top of the stairs, then another right, and then go through the door on your left, like I just did, and head through that door. Head through the door at the end of that corridor. You'll end up in this corridor. I like to turn off the radio there because the noise is annoying, but you're just following the corridor around here. And keep going, there's only really one path at this point. Open up the door. Keep following the path around. You'll end up in this kind of attic -y area, I guess. Like a storage area. Like this part of the house was under construction or something. It's kind of weird. But either way, there's only one way for you to go through this corridor. So just keep following it along. And you'll end up in this room with all the wardrobes. In the middle wardrobe is another one of the Matryoshka dolls. So you'll need to open both of the doors and then take a picture and then the doll will appear in the bottom of the wardrobe grab that and then head for the hole in the corner of the room over here it's to the immediate right of the door that you just came through and you'll end up in this area and then use the 
rug on the floor. It'll get pulled out of the way and reveal a hole for you to go down. Climb down that ladder. And once you're done climbing down that ladder, follow the path around and interact, interact with the hole at the back of this area right here. And you'll pull out this big piece of metal. No one likes metal in their hole. <laughs> Especially that length, god damn. Alright, now that that's done. How did you fit all of that in there, mate? Let's head back. And, uh... Go back up the ladder. We just needed to move that out of the way. Now that we've done that, let's go right up this little set of stairs and keep following the path around. And... Don't go into any of these doors. Just keep following. And until you get to the chair that's blocking the closet, pick up the chair, move it out of the way, Open up the closet doors and head through the closet and go left. You'll need to free up a hand in order to pick up that chair, so make sure you put whatever you've got in your inventory away so that you can move the chair. When you go through that door, you want to go left and then through the door that's directly ahead of you and then through the door that's on your right and then through the door that's directly ahead of you, through that door, through another door. And what do you know? Another door. Lots of doors. Keep on going, swing a left to go up the stairs and go through the door that's directly opposite you. This is a pull door apparently, yep. And then you want to go through the door, I think that's on your left. This area has actually changed a little bit um, and they've made it so that you don't need to keep the other door open. You just need to go through the door on your left and then follow this area around so that you can get the key that is through this door at the bottom of the stairs on your left and in the cabinet you get the rusty key and then we can head back the way we came and this will unlock the locked door that was in that area with the four doors it's opposite you as you come through the door you've just gone through so open that door and go right here and grab the big plank that's in the corner of the room and then you need to use the plank to cover the hole if you follow the path around there we go over that it's kind of hard to see where you're going when you pick up that plank but it's relatively easy to find where you've got to go take a left when you go through that door ignore the doors and the spookies that go on just keep going forward don't pay attention to them just head through this door at the end of the corridor and you'll end up in this redly lit area and you want to go up this the set of stairs to your left as you go down the ones you've just gone down. When you come through this door, you're going to need to use the camera to see where you're going. So just light the camera up. At the top of these stairs is a door you've got to go through. It's kind of hard to see, but if you just... It's a push door, so if you interact and just walk into it, it will open. Follow the path around and you'll reach this hole in the floor for you to drop down into. And you'll end up here where you've got to go through this door. And you'll end up in this room that's full of junk. And you just need to climb up it all to get to the door that's at the top of it all. So climb all the way up. And there we go. Open up the door right here. You might need to stand out of the way to open this door because it's a pull door. And we'll be back in the house. So that's pretty much it for Lucy's chapter. You can have a little look for your alien friend while you're here. All we need to do now is to go to the bathroom. We've got a cutscene or two to go through. And that's it for Lucy's chapter. We're getting those creepy noises playing. Here we are. Close the door. Or it'll close for you. Pull back the shower curtain. And I'm not entirely sure what triggers the bathtub to start pouring. But basically we're trapped in this room now. I think it's similar to what happens in Raken's chapter. Where you need to interact with the doors and they become jammed. So try that. Try just interacting with the doors. Eventually, the uh, the bathtub will start running. If you look through the mirrored fro or the frosty glassy, you can see Lucy standing in the bathtub, which is kind of creepy. I don't think I've ever seen anybody else point that out on their runs. But yeah, she's standing there. You can see her hair moving, if you look really carefully, and the whiteness of her dress. 
Like I said, if you go around, she's not there. A very cool effect. Oh, I think the light just got turned off. Rude! Yeah, you can see, like, how much it stands out there when it's dark in the room. Creepy stuff. So, eventually, the bathtub will fill up and also the light will get turned off. So, we'll wait. This takes a minute. Also, when the bathtub's running, if you come over to this window, you can see this dude just standing here looking at you. Must be cold out there because he's shivering for some reason. Yeah, when you get close to him, he bails on the whole situation. Rude. Okay. So I'll just have a little patience here and we'll wait for the bathtub to finish. When you'll get when it um when the bathtub is almost full. I think Lucy turns the light off, and I'm not sure if she can kill you. But basically you just want to turn the light off uh, on as fast as you can when she turns it off. You might have to click it a few times. But it takes a moment. There we go. Or was that me? That might have been me. And there we go. So once that happens, the uh, bathtub will shortly after finish. And you just need to interact with the bathtub when it stops running. Pretty sure I was just standing next to it, spamming left click so that it would let me in as soon as possible. And when you get into the bathtub, we'll have a spooky moment with Lucy. This section's pretty straightforward, you've just got to pretty much follow the dialogue. Once one dialogue finishes playing, another one will appear. You can kind of hear a, a noise that indicates that the next one showed up and you just have to move between the lit areas to trigger them all. We'll just let this play out. Lucy! Supper's ready! Come on up! Lucy! Over to the birdcage. Why would she do that? She loved Pico. I don't know. She's never done anything like it. We, uh... I think we should see a professional. syringes for a child. Couldn't they just give us pills like everyone else? How can a child trust a parent that thrusts needles up their arms? This new doctor clearly doesn't know anything about parenting. Right. Onto the table. I don't want their help anymore. She's only been worsening ever since we went to these doctors. Imaginary friends and all these weird behaviors? 
She doesn't even call me mom anymore! They're just trying to help. It's not their fault. Even before we sought their help, she had problems. She killed Pico for fuck's sake! Don't you remember? Right, and then finally the bathtub. And after this one, we're done with the three chapters before we got to do the mirror mask. Let's go ahead and step into the bathtub. Lovely sounds. Somehow she ripped her own jaw off. Okay. So, Lucy's progress item is in the sink. And that's it for the three chapters. We've still got a chunk more to do though. we got to do the, uh, the mirror mask stuff. A gruesome end. Right, so I think at this point I may have gone around and collected up the seven videotapes. Beaten Lucy's chapter will get you chapter Lucy. Complete Lucy's chapter. And picking up that tape will also get you the achievement for finding one videotape. You can find the next one, which is negligence. In the parents' bedroom, next to where we found Dolores' progress item. The first one was called Pride. Um, and the achievement for getting one tape is Dwayne's Memento, find one VHS tape. And now we're going to head to the basement to get Raken's one, I think. I like to collect the ones from the chapters first. So, here it is. That's number three. I'm not sure if I open up the wall here. Yeah. We are going to have to open up that wall in a little while. But let's go ahead and get all of these tapes. So, number four is this one. The last one we got is the prison tape. This one is the addiction tape. So, that's number four. In the heater room right here, the boiler room, you can find number five, which is greed. I think I may have had a look for... Um, the alien heel. Always trying to keep an eye out for him. Again, I do show the location of him at, towards the end of this video. It will be time stamped in the description for you. And tape number six is in this set of drawers right here. That's indifference. And tape number seven is over by the progress room which is over here. I'm not sure if at this point if I ran around and did a, did a bunch of like the collectible side stuff before I did the mirror mask pieces. But um, the last tape 
is right here. And it's called Affliction. Right. And so now that you have them all, head back to the living room. And you can check here for the alien again. He ain't there though. And we can store all of the tapes right here. I'm not sure if I went round and did side stuff here or if I continued with the mirror mask pieces. Let's see what I did. So that will get you the Dwayne's Memento Master. Find all the VHS tapes. I'm going around turning on light bulbs and stuff. So I think I think here I went and got the electric room key and I went into the wrong room there. It's actually over here. Um, and I wanted to do the Easter egg for Lucy's chapter, which is find room 302, I think. Let me see. Yeah, the achievement's called Dance Dance, which is find room 302. When you come into the bathroom where Ju uh, Lucy's jaw was, you can find a key in the sink. Open up the safe that's in the office over here, and you can find this piece of paper that says room 302, and that's in the basement. So let's go and do that now. Get that out of the way. That's another achievement done. I think I may have swept up a bunch of stuff here before I did the mirror mask. I know that I got it all done either way, so... Right. So, over here, here's room 302. We're just going to interact with this room for another Easter egg. Fun stuff. Alright, so if you didn't know, that resembles the room in, I think it's Silent Hill 4, the room. That room is pretty much modelled the same way. So let's open up the electric room to get rid of the electric room key. You can see it right there. Don't need to go in there just yet, but it doesn't hurt to open it. Let's figure out what I'm doing here then, if I go and do the mirror mask or not. Yeah, it looks like I left a bunch of the other side stuff until the end. So, let's start doing some of these. I've got tape number one, which is Affliction. And for this one, we need to go to the parents' bedroom. So play the tape. You can stand here and watch it if you want. I think I may have stood here and watched it until I knew which one it was. Some of these I know and some of them I don't. But this one is the parents' bedroom. So, away we go. Have a little look for our alien friend. He's not there. Let's go, uh, let's go to the parents' bedroom. Upstairs, then. Little Utah and heel. And into this room. So we need to go down the ladder. And if you turn around, you can see a bed. Interact with the bed that looks like there's someone in it, but it's full of beer cans. <laughs> and then, eventually... The um, lights will come on in the back of this room, and you can Why, sit down there, chap. and have a I've chat been with this guy. For you for quite some time now. You're my friend, aren't you? Care to share a drink with me? When he asks you to drink, you have what to drink. What a look you have! Are you tired somehow? I get you. It's hard to rest in this place, isn't it? Yes, I know. I've been here for quite some time, you know, and I'm glad you came along. But hey, we're here to talk about you, right? Never mind my foolish burdens and talk to me. So you feel confused, don't you? I understand. Everything has been really blurry since you woke up, hasn't it? Do you even know your own name, old friend? Dwayne, of course. There's no mystery here, but I can see that you are wondering if this is real after all. I can assure you, although this might not reassure you, that it is very real. In fact, 
one might say that this is the first time you're facing reality. No, no, don't look at me like that. I'm on your side, Dwayne. We've been friends for so long, after all. Who am I? Ah, you've always been like this, haven't you? Always asking the wrong questions. Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne. Listen to me here. The real question isn't who am I, but who are you? Dwayne? But that is nothing but a name, my friend. I'm not asking about a name. I'm asking about who you are. Now, now, Dwayne, shush, shush, shush a little bit and take a sip. Remember, you and me, we go a long way. I'm on your side. Why don't we take a little sip to our friendship? Just a little sippy sip when he tells you to drink. You need to drink. If you want me to help you, I've got to know something. Are you a fucking murderer? No? Well, what could be the reason behind all that drinking and drugging, then? What's up with you? Oh. You've been seeing things, you say? Things, hmm? Things like that? Don't you worry, my friend. Just take a sip and everything's gonna be back to normal. Go ahead, drink a little of this wonderful poison. It'll do you real good. Okay. I would advise you to take that drink now, my friend. Cheers. Chug, chug. See, ain't that sweet? You know you can always rely on this to get you back on track, don't you? Yeah, you remember the coarse taste that burns and slides down your throat, ominously bringing relief and the dulling of your senses? Come on, take another sip. You know you want it. Cheers. Okay. And another sip. And another sip. Cheers. Now, Dwayne, will you fucking tell me who you are? So, once the TV goes out, wait a few seconds and then take a sip of your drink. And your mirror mask piece will show up on the little chair thing. And this will get you the achievement Mirror Mask. Find one piece of the mirror mask. Beautiful. So, off we go then. Let's go back to the TV. We got six more tapes to go. And the bed's back already. I really hope these guys make more games. This game's been really good. Thoroughly enjoyed this game. Okay. So, take the tape out of the tape player. And slap it back in the deck. And then grab another one. Which is Greed. Let's go. I think this one is the one in the basement, yeah. So for this one we need to go through a vent in the basement. Let's get going. All the way down. And turn them lights on wherever you can. So right here we want to head into this room. And climb up on the stepladder and interact with the vent that's up here. The vent will open, but the ladder will break. <laughs> Oof. And you'll need to go and find another ladder. So, 
spin it around and head to the electric room which is right here and in the back corner of this room you can find another one of these little step ladders so take that back to the vent right there and off you go into the vent okay so crawl your way through this vent and keep on going Right. So let's sign the contract that says you don't give a fuck. A very simple contract. Short but sweet. So once you've done that, this door over here is going to open up. Go on in. And we know how these guys work. They're all crowded around the mask piece we need. But if you crouch, um, they won't grab you. So you can crouch and bump into them as much as you like. But you should be able to get to about here just fine anyway. And grab yourself... The mask piece. Right, so that's two mask pieces. Congratulations, Freems, you can crowd count to two. Let's go, baby. So we'll be back in the house now. Open up this door. And let's go do another tape. Tape number three. We're making our way. So, again, having a little look for that alien there. Let's get to the top floor. Into the living room. And grab ourselves tape number three. We need to take the tape out of the tape player first put it back grab number three which is negligence let's go slap it in so I think this one this one is um, another one that's in the basement so let's head back quite a few of these are in the basement So, come down here next to the TV in one of the picture frames you can find a vinyl. Use the vinyl with the phonograph and then crank that bad boy. And then we can go through the wall. And we're just going down the aisle here. Fill that cart with beer. Fill that void in your soul with 
Okay, so eventually after filling the cart with beer and listening to that guy go on a bit, the screen will fade to black and uh, you'll end up in front of this door, which will lead you to the living room, where you need to sit and drink beers. Time for bed now. Daddy? I want a story. I think it would be great if you told her a bedtime story, Twain. It's been a while. Chug a lug, chug a lug. Daddy? Are you just going to ignore her? Always ignoring us, glued to your fucking beers. You don't talk, you don't sleep in the bedroom, you don't get out at all, you just don't care, do you? Why don't you just leave? Mom. Why aren't you like that, Tom? Talk to me. You used to be so good to us. That's not healthy. And there's mask piece number three. Sorted. Okay. So, once you're done here, you can stand back up. And then you need to leave the living room. Because you can't, I don't think you can use the tape player or anything at the moment. You need to leave. And then the door will close, and you can head back in, everything will be back to normal. And we're on to tape number four. Which is indifference. This one's a bit of a long one. I think this may be the one where we've got to find the picture frames. Let's take a look. This is probably the longest tape to get done. Let's have a little look here. Yeah. I think I watched this one for a little bit longer just to be certain of which one it was. But for this one we've got to go and find six picture frames. I was backing up here. Waiting for it to change. Come on. Yeah. So we've got to find six picture frames for this one. Um... There's one in the kitchen over here. Or, I don't know if this counts as the kitchen, but it's the hallway that leads to the kitchen. Either way, it's right there. That's one of the frames. There's one in the progress room. Which is up here. You can find it propped up against the wall next to the chair right there. The strange frame. 
Listening to that phone can get a little bit annoying. Let's go and get the other four. There's one upstairs in the parents' bedroom. I'm not sure if I get that one next or not. Let's go and have a look. Up we go. So it's in a closet in the parents' bedroom. Almost walked right past it there. There it is, strange frame number three. And the other three are all in the basement. So let's head down there. It's a good idea to end getting the strange frames in the basement because that's where you've got to use them. So let's go down. And you can find one in the storage room. Got to get that out of the way first. There we go. So it's over here. There we go. Propped up against the wall. That's number four. And there's another one in the freezer room. And it's sort of hidden away in the top right hand corner of the room. Right there. That's number five. And the other one's in the electric room. Uh, just here. Propped up against this box. And that's all six. Let's go put them into place. Get this tape out of the way. Use all of them. Sorted. Right. So through the hallway of beer cans. Open this up, and you need to eat, or I always say eat when I come to these pills. Take sounds a lot better. Take these pills, um, and all the chains will come off the door. That's two, and three. And there's number five. Yeah, I think I was standing here for a second thinking I'd taken it, but I hadn't. Take the pill. There we go. Okay. And then when you approach the door and try to use it, all the chains will come back on. And you need to interact with all of these doors. And that will start removing the chains. So that one's just a brick wall, this one's full of pills. This one's jammed. This one has like a glass behind it and this dude is sitting here painting something there we go let me in and uh, you'll enter the hall of depression and you want to follow this corridor all the way down and then when you reach the end just turn around and then turn back And this will happen. This is definitely a long picture frame room. You got a bit of a walk here to take. Let's keep on walking. Eventually, you'll reach a boat. I really like the way this area is modelled. It does look really good. But let's just get to it. 
more than halfway through the tapes when we do this one now. And you need to put anything that's in your hands away because you need both of your hands to use the boat. Let's hop on the boat and get going. Huge apple over on your right there. Also, that face on your left. Someone watching the TV drinking beers on your left as well. And you've got somebody repetitively shooting themselves. And we're just going to ignore all that and keep on going. <laughs> Just get to shore. We are most of the way through this video now. Not a huge amount left to explain to you guys. When it comes to the bad ending, I won't actually show the bad ending, but I'll show you how to get it. Um, and I'll explain what you want to do when it comes to getting the bad ending and then the good ending when we cross that bridge. So, park up the boat, get to shore, climb up these stairs. All the way up. It's easy to get stuck on these stairs. I think at like this point somewhere, it'll sometimes like stop you. Yeah, right there. You have to like walk up them at an awkward angle to actually keep going. I'm guessing the stairs are like broken or something. That's why it does that. So, when you get into the lighthouse you can sit down and have another conversation with our plague doctor friend but I just went for the stairs you don't have to if you're just looking to get this done like I am right here I've already done a walkthrough type deal where I show everything so I'm just doing what you have to kind of deal to your yeah 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 just go up the stairs what? you tell me this isn't your domain nonsense it's the you can still kind of hear him talking. Okay. Shut up, play doctor man. So climb up the ladder once you get up top. And then interact with the candle and you'll get another cutscene. Explain this to me. Please talk to me. I love you, Dwayne. I want to help you. First the alcohol and now this? Who prescribed you this and why? I want to know so I can help you through it. Are you slowly going insane, Dwayne? Should we be worried because we are? Recently, you've been scaring everyone with your cold indifference. Are you thinking of leaving us? What do you want to run from so bad that you drug yourself every day? Do you want to die, Dwayne?
I could help you with that, you know? I'm only with you because you have money. It's probably blood money, but I don't care. I don't care about you. If you, you want to die, die, I'll happily, happily oblige. Do you, you want, want a rope? rope? Want me to kick the bucket? Life would be so much easier without your mopey face around, you delusional fuck. Want me to stab you with seven knives? Want me to rip the jaw off your ugly face? How about I break both your legs and leave you to rot in a cellar? You're a disgrace. People despise you. I despise you. Your children despise you. You're horrifying. You should die. You know what? Forget it. I don't want to help you die. Do it yourself. I won't help you into release. Kill yourself by yourself alone. And go to hell where you belong! Rude. Right. So is that mask piece number five now? I think. A couple more to go. Let's go ahead and open up this door. We're back in the basement. And uh, we can have a little look for our alien friend if you want to. Don't think he was there though. Let's keep on moving. Back to the living room. See, I'm not sure. Did I do more tapes here or did I do other stuff? I might have left the last tape until I did the other stuff. Oh no, we got three more tapes to go. That's the fourth piece for us. That's the fourth piece. Right, let's put that back. Let's grab tape number four then, or five then, which is Pride. And this is the one you get for doing Lucy's chapter. Let's slap it in, see where we're going for this one. I think this may be the trapdoor one in the basement, yeah. So, for this one, once you play the tape um, and leave the living room, a key will appear on a table in a glass right here. And we need to head to the garage in order to get this one. I think I started taking the wrong route for this one, but yeah, basically you need to go into the the attic area of the garage. So that's this way and then up these stairs over here. And we need to move this toolbox out of the way. So let's go ahead and do that. It takes a minute if you're on mouse. It definitely takes forever to slide out of the way, but Let's go into the hole in the wall that's now there. Open up this little box right here and we'll get this handle. And let's go through here. And we need to go downstairs. And we're going to the actual basement now, to the area where the mannequins are. So let's get moving. Right, so come down here, take a left here, and use the handle on the little trapdoor thing right here, or the hatch, whatever you want to call it. Open that up. So you need to interact with the hole again to jump down. Down we go. And then once you get down here, you want to jump up onto the counter that's to your right when you first drop down. Pick up a stool, smash the window, and you can drop the... Uh, stool now. I actually dropped my lighter as well there by accident. And I couldn't find it on the way back, but there is another one down here. You do need a lighter in order to get through the tunnel we're about to go down, but I didn't know where my lighter went. I was a bit confused as to where it went to. 
maybe it fell through the counter or something like glitched but when you smash this open if you try to go through it it will tell you you need something to light the passageway luckily for us there's a lighter on the counter next to us so I'm sure it'll always be there considering the game wants you to have something to light your way. I was looking around for a lighter because I didn't actually know it was here. I can see it right there, yeah. Here we go. Grab the lighter and off we go into the passage. And this will just lead us back to the garage. So stand up about here and work your way out of this tunnel and eventually you'll see a hole in the roof I have to walk in for a little bit here we go Let's head to the garage then. Right. So back to where we used that hatch and now you'll find the mirror mask piece right there. And that's piece number five, two more to go. We've come so far. We have done a lot. Alright, so let's head back. As we're in the basement, feel free to have a look for the little alien dude on that dresser I keep looking at. I think I might have gone and had a look, maybe. No, I left him alone back to the living room so this next tape is probably the most difficult one this is the prison tape apparently though there's a bug you can do you might want to try it um although i've never done it this way apparently if you take light bulbs with you into the um into this next tape or candles you can use them to light your way because it's very dark in this next area, which can make it really difficult to do anything. So it might be worth snagging a light bulb or two um, for this next section. I did have... Or did I, I left the light bulb here because we're going to need that in a little bit to do one of the side achievements. So I left my one right there. I did this without using these little glitches. And I think it's probably best during a guide to do it that way. Um, in case they patch it. You never know, they might patch it. But we need to go down here to where we just were and follow this corridor around and when we reach this point we'll get a little cutscene um, with the light bulb and you want to follow the path back the way you came and remember the layout of this corridor because the left and the right turns here you've got to navigate in the dark so remember those turns that's why you see me looking down them a couple of times and it's real it's really easy to die in this area there's also a easter egg in this area that you can only get during this segment so it's worth not finishing not collecting the mirror mask piece in this area until you've got the easter egg in those corridors i looked down that i showed you earlier there's four walls to smash and two of them were the one the corridors I was looking down at the beginning, those two. And you need to get the sledgehammer and essentially just smash the walls at the end of the corridor. It's difficult to do because you can't see. And also, um, you've got that Lewis guy. The guy that looks like he's covered in ink coming after you. And he can just grab you and choke you out. It's kind of difficult to give you any advice here other than just to try to avoid him. If he is following you, you can lead him into these rooms and sort of circle around him and get out. Um, but he is very difficult to get around. And when you're trying to get down the corridors that are in the darkness, 
you can sort of walk into the wall uh, that it would be adjacent to and you can sort of see the beams you can see the wooden beams and that lets you know when the corridor opens up and you've just got to walk straight forward here he comes so I just sort of walked around in there but in this last room that I'm about to go into you do have to smash open all of these walls by the way before you can grab the, the mirror piece you may not do them in the same order as me but in this room that I'm about to go into now there's a box in the corner you need to carry that box to the first wall that I smashed open which is the one that's above you um, it's the I think it's the son's bedroom in the house that um, it looks like and this is the easter egg and this is missable so if you want to get this achievement you need to do this here you need to do it now uh, otherwise you won't be able to come back and get it but basically you use the box to climb up that gap and then you can come in here open up the closet and you'll find this axe in the wall and it says from johnny to you which is a the shining reference also i think the box is bugged you can put the box into your inventory but when you try and pull it out and use it uh, to use the step up to get into this room uh, it won't let you put it down you have to carry it you have to hold it in front of your face in order for it to work that seemed to be what worked for me maybe they'll patch that um, but yeah something to bear in mind when you do this when you interact with the wall here and you go back through the wall seals and you can't come back in so just be warned don't collect the mask piece before you've done that achievement like i said you need to grab the box from one of the rooms take it to the wall you smash open which is the boy's bedroom and then put the box down stand on the box and climb into the room i know it's a little bit complicated but uh make sure you don't miss that one if you're into getting those achievements so after that uh we've got is that two more tapes left or one more tape one more tape left We've done well. Let's put that one away. Get our last tape, which is Affliction. Smash that one in. And for this one, we need the crowbar. Um, I was explaining a lot, but it might be worth grabbing the crowbar before you come upstairs. Although if you haven't got it, you've just got to go to the storage room to grab it. It's not really that far. Yeah, I think I was confused as to which one this was initially. So I was sitting here watching the tape to figure it out. But yeah, it's the it's the one in the mirror room. And you need the crowbar. This is also a pretty long tape. Come on now. There we go. I think I probably realized at this point and got moving. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, let's go grab us the crowbar. God knows what I was doing there. So I just stand in there, but whatever. I must have got distracted for a second. This is a long, long video. How long have we been going for, actually? Let me check. Two and a half hours already, like two hours 35 or something, maybe a little bit more. All right, there's our crowbar. Let's go. Let's go get this last tape done with. Like I said, this one's also a pretty long tape. But we need to go to the room that we unlock with the mirror key in Dolores' chapter. So, yeah, you won't be able to do this one until you've done Dolores' chapter. Let's go ahead and use the crowbar on the floorboards here. And we're coming in. Down we go. Let's get to it. Light up that lighter. Avoid standing in the dark for too long. Thanks for the update. So you'll come across this door down here. Let's open that up. And head all the way down. You've got some stairs you can take on your right, but you don't want to go that way just yet. And you've also got a corridor here. You just want to keep going forward, though, to the very end of this area. 
Let's keep it moving. Up these stairs right here. And there's a control panel right here. Let's click on that. I'm not sure if I'm crouched right here, but these railings are really big. They're like head level. Either way, let's keep on going. And uh, head down. And now we can take a left down that corridor we passed a minute ago. Just put my lighter away there. Now move these pipes out of the way. If you try and come down here straight away, those pipes will block your route. So we need to move them fast. Okay. So now that we're here, we're just going to go for this submarine looking door over here. God knows how this big factory thing is underneath your house, but whatever. I get that it's supposed to be some sort of messed up reality deal. I get the impression that Dwayne's dead. You know what I mean? He's like stuck in some sort of loop. Well, you need to go up the stairs to your left once you get through here. So let's go up these stairs. Right here. Once you get in here, on the right side, you can find a key. Just on this sort of cafeteria tray, grab that, turn around, head back towards the door. Our mate's going to show up, so we're going to turn away from him and head over here to the table. You need to walk towards the door to activate that guy before you can climb this table and go through the vent up here. The game won't let you do it until you've walked towards the door. So follow the vent around now that you've got that key keep on going and we're going to smash through another vent there we go and we need to go down the stairs we're next to and then up the opposite set of stairs. Let's go. All the way up. And we'll end up in a locker room type area. And uh, on the left side of this room, you can find a locker that's covered in that ink stuff. So use the key on that locker. Open it up and you'll find a keycard inside that we need. Grab that. And then we're going to go back the way we came. And back down the stairs over here. There we go. Let's go over here and use the keycard on this door. Open up the door. Keep going straight forward to go through that red door at the end. Get a little bit of a lag spike there. You kind of get lag spikes in this game when it saves. And you get the little tape in the corner and it's auto saving. And follow the pipeline to the well in the middle. Pretty sure you need to interact with the apple. I'm not sure if it just sort of the well if this cutscene happens when you get close.
Boom. You're coming with me, says Lewis. Right then. So, that's our final mask piece. If you don't care about side achievements and getting things cleaned up, then um, you can collect this mask piece and go to the progress room, use the mirror mask and get the good ending uh, by going to the hole in the wall next to Raken's, where Raken's tape is found, smashing it and going through the door at the bottom of the stairs. I do end up showing that ending. I also explained the bad ending. We haven't got much longer left. We've got about, let's say about 20 something minutes, 25 minutes or something left before we're done here. This has been a long video to sit and commentate through, but I wanted to make this video to get everything explained. Now we have all of the mask pieces, which has taken us a minute. So pretty much all we have left to do here is side stuff more or less. So let's go and get the achievement for using the revolver. By, we, you should have just got the mirror mask master achievement, which is find all pieces of the mirror mask for doing what we've just done. Um, you should have also had the special gift achievement, which is find Johnny's gift. We've done that. I'm trying to see if there's anything I haven't mentioned. I think there's still a few achievements for us to go and clean up. But we have done a lot of them. We've got to get the rest of the Matryoshka dolls. Which we will do shortly. So, if you smash this wall, this is the one I was talking about. Um, and come down here, you can find a revolver on a table. And it's got six bullets in it. If you pick up the gun and shoot yourself, it'll take you to the beginning of the game next to the progress room. But just using it once gets you the achievement easy way out, which is use the revolver. If you use it six times and use all of the bullets and then come back and use it again, that's how you get the bad ending. You just have to continuously just keep coming down here and shooting yourself until all of the bullets are gone. When you've used all six and then you do it again, that will get you the void ending. Um, I do, I do keep coming down here and doing it in a little while. Um, but once you've done that, you end up back up here. Like I said, if you want the bad ending, just keep going down there and doing it again and again. If you want to get the bad ending and then the good ending, it might be a good idea to like save it and then go and do it a bunch of times, get the bad ending and then load your save and then continue on and do the good ending. That's a really easy way to get both endings. Just make sure you're using your saves. You can also see like tally marks by the door for the bullets that you've used. So now that we're done with all of this, there's the mirror mask. Let's get the Matryoshka dolls. Matryoshka dolls. There's one right there in that drawer um, in the progress room. Don't know if you saw that. It's to the left and sort of in the back of that desk or chest of drawers type area. Kind of turned away from it a bit quick, but hopefully you guys saw that. So we have four of those now, and there's ten of them in total. I think with the last one, I was a little bit confused as to where it was. I think I might have checked a couple of times to try and find it. But there's one in the parents' bedroom, just over here, in the drawer. Grab that one. There's one in the son's bedroom, which is over here. Let's open up the door. And it's in between these boxes and the wardrobe here. You can kind of see the edge of it. It's a difficult one to spot, but there it is. So that's... Is that five now? It's not it's six now. Four more to go. And uh, there's another one in the kitchen over here. In the back. There's other achievements to get in the kitchen, but we'll come back to those in a minute. I'll try and stick to doing one thing at a time. So that's number seven. Um, I think the last one I get is the one in the garage. I was a little bit confused as to where it was, but I do show them all. So 
There's one in the freezer room, actually in the freezer. Don't forget to check for your little alien dude. There it is. You can sort of see its head there. It's number eight. And there's another one down here in the hallway where we did the prison tape. Hidden very sneakily under the stairs. Let's go to that one. There it is. And that's nine. So there's one more to get and it's in the garage. I think I was, like I said, a little bit confused here. And I was like, which one am I missing? I know I'm missing one. But if you remember where we opened the Omega box with that key. And we had to move the toolbox. It's in there on the opposite side of that room to the box. But yeah, I was kind of, I, I think I went and checked here to see how many I had to make sure I had them all. Um, and I noticed I was missing one because the game stores them up here. And I was like, hmm, where's the one I'm missing? Where is it? And then I think it came to me that it was in the garage. So I went to go get it. So right now we're just going around cleaning up all the little side achievements. Getting this last matryoshka doll. Rude, it closed the door on me. Getting this last matryoshka doll, or matryoshka doll, whatever they're called, will get you the achievement. Matryoshka dolls master. Find all matryoshka dolls. So we just need to go and heal, and it's on, like I said, the opposite side of the room, right there. And that's the last one. So we've got all of those now. It's another achievement down. Let's see what we go and do next. I think I might do the neighbors' pages next. But we'll see. There's a few things we haven't done yet that we're going to get figured out. Um, let's head this way. So I think I do a few achievements here all together. So yeah, right here I'm going to do the novice electrician achievement for which you just have to replace a light bulb. This light bulb gets blown out at the very beginning of the game so it should be blown out for you if you haven't already replaced the light bulb. That will get you the novice electrician achievement which is replace a light bulb. Interact with the front door to get the first reaction achievement, which is try to leave via the front door. And underneath the front door, you can find the first neighbors page, which will get you the achievement of the neighbors. Find one of the neighbors pages. And now I'm going to go and answer the phone to listen to this first phone Hello, call. Twain. It's Rose, your neighbor. I, I know it's late, and I know that I tend to be a little anxious about small things. I apologize for that, but I'm getting a bit worried. I haven't seen you out of the house in about three weeks. Is everything all right? Could you call me just to let me know everything's fine? All right. Bye-bye. Okay, so you need to collect two of these pages. And providing that you've listened to the first phone call, you'll get another phone call. There's four of these pages to collect. And usually you'll listen to the phone call when you first start the game. The first page is under the door, like I mentioned to you, and the second page is right here. Make sure before you've collected the second page that you've listened to the first phone call from Rose, and then you, you will trigger another phone call from her. Sometimes, I think this has only started happening since the full release, the phone won't trigger and she won't call you the second time uh, at least straight away but if you just save the game and then load it you should get the second phone call from her so that's what I did here I just quickly dropped the save and uh, loaded it back up to get her to call me and it worked first time so I'm fairly confident that that's going to work so here's our second phone call Look 
at me talking your ear off. Maybe he's right about that mute button. Just never mind. Dwayne, I'm sorry. I'll let you go now. Talk soon. Okay. So that's phone call number two. And once you've answered that phone call, the other two neighbors' pages will spawn. You need to listen to that phone call for the other two to appear in the house. So, again, once you've had that phone call, the third and fourth pages can be found in the living room and upstairs in one of the closets. So we'll get the one in front of the TV that spawns. That's page number three. And page number four is upstairs in the closet that connects Lucy's room to the parents' room. So in here we go. Let's open all oh, the closets already open for us. Nice. And here's the final page. That will get you the achievement, the neighbor's master. Find all the neighbor's pages. And once you've done that, you don't have to do this for like an achievement or anything, but once you've done that, you'll get a third phone call from Rose, which is something I always like to include. It's kind of creepy. And I think it's it's pretty sweet to include a nice little easter egg type deal she'll pick your body and then she'll take your mind <laughs> Creepy. All right. So that's that done. So um, now let's do some side achievements. Let's go ahead and head into the kitchen here. And there's an achievement called Special Recipe, which is attempt to use the microwave. You just need to open the microwave, put something in it like a mug or something like that, close the microwave, and your achievement should pop. Nice and easy. So there's another achievement connected to the microwave, which is hot chocolate, drink the hot chocolate. Right here I was just putting a bunch of stuff into the microwave because I wanted. I thought it'd be funny to see what happened if I filled the microwave full of stuff and then did this achievement, but I ended up thinking, screw it, it would take so, too long. So you don't have to put a bunch of stuff in the microwave, but never mind. I couldn't close the door either. I couldn't close the microwave door after that, but grab the powder from the bottom drawer to the left of the microwave and put it on the tray that you can see next to the microwave with the mug already on it. Open up the fridge and grab the milk from the back of the fridge and then use that with the tray also. And then interact with it. Stick your head through the microwave door, obviously. And you can make yourself some hot chocolate hot chocolate so let's get it done dope cow milk by the way okay so then we'll put this into the microwave. Right, so now that that's done, we need to go up the stairs and into the sun's room and once you've done that, there's like a big glowing green portal. Interact with that to get your hot chocolate and that'll get you the achievement, hot chocolate, drink the hot chocolate.
Alright, and then we'll, we'll be back in the sun's room. Okay. Let's take a pill here. I'm going a bit insane. So, I need to get the smiley face sticker achievement. And this achievement is just called Smile. Find the smiley face sticker. And it's in the middle of the attic, so head up here. And in the middle, follow the route you've gone a couple of times, but instead of going right here, go left. And around this glass case, you can find the smiley face sticker. There it is. So that's for the achievement or trophy, Smile. So we're coming close now. I think we've done the majority of everything. I'm looking through my achievements here to see if there's anything I don't think we've done yet. Now there's only a couple of things we haven't done. Um, in fact, my game may fade into another section here because one thing that I wanted to do was to take more shots with the revolver and explain that a little bit more. Although I might trim that down a little bit because I did it a bunch of times. Um, because I didn't, I didn't show the void ending, but this is how you get the achievement. Uh, I wanted to mention this more than once. It's just called Void. And you need to complete the void ending. So I think here I went round and I shot myself with the gun like a bunch more times. Eventually. And uh, yeah, I didn't do the final one. But if you do it one more time than I did, then you'll get that. Achievement or trophy. I think here I might have been looking for the alien. Gone and checked a couple of places to see if I could figure out where he was. So I'm not sure entirely what I'm doing here. There's one more achievement that you can't get in the house. It's uh, in the main menu, but I do cover that as well at the very end of this video. So here we are. So you'll want to do this a bunch of times. I'll show this twice. I think it's pointless for me to show this for every bullet. But basically, uh, again, I wanted to talk about this more. Every time you do this, you lose a bullet out of the revolver. I just want it to be as clear as possible. And when you run out of bullets, when it gets to six and the, the gun is empty, you do it one more time and that's how you get the void ending. I thought it was kind of pointless for me to show it here, but at least I'm explaining it for you guys. And, um, yeah, if you want to get it, it's not too difficult. You could see a bullet was missing because we did this once earlier. Bam. And when you spawn up back in the beginning of the house, I'll quickly show you guys the gun with no bullets in it or with one bullet left I, it doesn't really matter but i'll show it you anyway right so i couldn't find any footage of me with only one bullet left in it but i had one with two um so again just keep repeating yourself here keep coming down here keep doing this there's going to be someone in the comment section that's like you didn't explain the void ending or something but this is how you do it just keep continuously doing this until all the bullets are gone shoot yourself one more time and you'll get the void in. I'll probably make a separate video on this as well, just explaining how to get the good and bad endings. I feel like that could be a good one to do, even though it's already explained here, and I've done the good ending a couple of times. And that's it for the majority of the achievements. There's a couple more to do. We've warped back to the house here. And the other one I wanted to explain a little further is the alien. This one is for Gotcha, you little, you warped Bernard the alien back to planet Kaif. There's the little alien dude, and he appears here and in the living room. You need to click on him before he disappears to get your achievement. He is RNG, though. He doesn't like to show up. I also found him here in the living room in between the picture frames. You can see how small he is. He's really, really tiny. If you reset the game, uh, he'll show up again. Oh, well, there's a chance he'll show up again. So save it, quit the game, load the game back up, uh, load up your save and see if he's there. Apparently, if you continuously do that, he'll show up. If you're lucky though, and you just keep checking those spots, you, you, you can find him whilst you're running through the game. And that's what I did. But even though I did it, you saw how many times I was looking in that, those spots during this playthrough, he didn't show up. 
Um, but hopefully you guys have better look, uh, look, look, luck. There's not really um, much else I can tell you than to just keep trying to reload your game and see and if he shows up, hopefully you get lucky with it and you find that guy. So, last. Oh, there's one more, actually one more thing after this, but last thing to do in the house is the good ending. Let's grab the mirror mask, which we have now completed. And when you put that on, the house will change. And... You need to head where we've just been with the revolver. And you'll get a different scenario now that you have the mask. So let's go there. You can actually get the void ending, I think, as soon as you have access to the basement. Like, really early on. You can end the game super fast. If you can, if you just get to the basement. So... Wrong way there. We'll go in this way. Down we go. Through here. Through the hole in the wall. And let's go say what up to the fam. This will get you the family, uh, family reunion. Complete the family reunion ending. So there's one more achievement for us to cover. But this one isn't obtained in the game. <laughs> Alright, so that's how you get the family reunion ending. You need the mirror mask. So for the last achievement, we need to go to the Hall of Fame. This is for the achievement 10 on the 10th. Find all the pages from the appreciation book. So when you come into the Hall of Fame, basically these pages are all hidden around in this area. This is a little rough because I, you can't find these again once you've found them once. So I was lucky enough to actually record me finding these the first time. So you might see me looking around a bit trying to find them like, what the hell? But there's one over here in the back corner. And the game thinks this is the first item I've picked up, so we get the basement item Q. But there's one of the pages, and some of the others are hidden. I think there's five or six of these. They're hidden behind the pictures, so just click on the pictures. There's one on the back right there. Um, I think there's a few of them you can find in that manner. I keep knocking down all the pictures. And there's a couple behind the pictures and placed on the back of them. Let's check the other side. Oh, there's not one there. You can pick the pictures back up and put them back on if you want to. There's another one. I think that's three that we've collected now. I think there's one behind this guy as well, maybe. Oh, no. And the other two... So there's five. There's five to get. The other two are back in the hallway at the beginning. One is on the wall right here. And one is on the floor right there. So now that you've got all of those, head back into the room we were just in. I was still looking for them here because the achievement's called 10 on the 10th. And I thought there would be 10 of these because of the name of it. But find all pages from the appreciation book. Come over here to the little pedestal that's in between the two statues. I'm still looking for them. I'm still looking around. I'm looking in this guy's booty cheeks. I'm really trying to find it. But just use the pages uh, on that. And there you go. You'll get... You should have five to put in. I think I'd already put one of them in. But once you put them all in, you'll get your achievement. And that should be all of it. So there you go. That's how to get everything done in Visage. My 100% guide. That's every achievement the game has to offer. Hopefully you found that useful. Let me know if you have. Thank you all for staying with me all the way through it. Um, yeah, I've got more Visage guides, if for whatever reason you would need them after watching this. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Have yourself a great day, and until next time, take it easy.